So welcome back and we are going to pick up where we left off and basically by now hopefully you know that by opening and closing sodium and potassium channel I can actually make a wave of positive charges move in a certain direction. And I'm just going to review this again just because I like reviewing things. Let's just say that for some reason I had a wave, I had some positive charges in the vicinity of this channel here and we know that these positive charges are going to cause this sodium channel to open and sodium is going to flood in. And sodium is going to flood in and make everything very positive around here. And maybe at this point, maybe at this point a potassium channel opened by now and it caused the area around it to be rendered negative because potassium is coming out and potassium is positive. So at this point we're going to lose positive charge and this is going to keep on going and maybe this positive charge gets here and this this channel is now opened and a lot of, of, of sodium is flowing in and this is what happens and maybe at this point a potassium channel opens here and all of these positive charges escape so now everything is here in here is more negative and in this way in this way this this little thing can move along the tissue and I can have a signal if, let's just say if this is my neuron, I can have a signal move along it. And it's good because I usually need signals to be transducted in my body. But I have a question. Let me pose a question for you. Let's just say I already said that if there's positive charges in the vicinity of this uh, sodium channel, it's going to open up. It's going to open up. And we said that after a while, uh, it, stops, it stops letting sodium in after a while. What happens here? Let's consider what happens here. The wave is moving in this direction, so it just came from this part and it's moving that way. But look at this. There's, there's still some sort of positive charge around this sodium channel. So how come this sodium channel is not opening? Well, let's assume if it's opening, what is going to happen? If this, if this, if this positive charge that moved, this is the positive charge that was here initially, and it started moving, and suddenly it's going to backfire and activate this, this little uh, sodium channel here and it's going to flow in again. It's going to flow in and it's going to cause positive charges to come in and then maybe this one now is going to flow in it's going to cause positive charges to come in and it's going to cause a chain reaction the other way. But we can't have that. We can't have chain reactions going the other way because signals need to go in a certain specific direction. So we need to have a mechanism to stop this from happening, to stop this from happening. And it's really important that we have that mechanism. And this is called the gating states of channels, gating states, gating states. And it just so happens that sodium has three gating states. Sodium, and this is for sodium, sodium can be closed just like this channel. This channel is now closed. It can be opened. If there's, if there's positive charge, this channel was closed and now it's open. And when it's opened, uh, we can let sodium in. So when it's, when, it, when it's closed, it can be opened. It can be opened. But what I also said is after a, a sodium channel opens, after a while, after a while, let's just say as time passes by, let's say, I'm just going to throw a number here because I like to have something realistic. After, after 10 milliseconds, it's going to inactivate. It's going to inactivate. Now, when we're talking about open, when we're talking about open, we have, we have flux. That means that we have flow. I'm just going to write flow because I like it better. I like flow, so it has flow. Sodium can flow in. When it's, when it's closed, there's no flow. There's no flow of sodium. And you can think of it as no conduction because that's what they say, but I just like flow. And after it's opened, we said that it's going to let some charges in, let some sodiums in, but after a while, it's just going to inactivate. And basically, inactivating is similar to closed. It has no flow. It has no flow. But the interesting thing is that an inactivated an inactivated channel cannot be opened. It cannot be opened. First of all, it has to be closed. And let's see what's, what the implication, what the implication may be here. And we're going to go through this. Let's just say that this, 
sodium channel is closed and now suddenly it opened up. Now suddenly it opened up and it opened up and a bunch of sodium came in and still here a bunch of sodium is coming in. A bunch of sodium is coming in and at this point it is not after a while, let's just say a while has passed, it is inactivated. It's inactivated. What does that mean? That means that even if I have positive charges here that really wants to open this channel, they're not going to be able to open because you can't go from inactive to open because this circle only goes this way. So this channel can't open at the moment. It's going to have to wait a while before it can open. And by the time that it's closed, by the time that it went from inactive to closed, at this point, there's no positive charges around it. So this is a really good mechanism to avoid having this signal go the other way. And you know what? Just for kicks, I'm going to repeat, I'm going to repeat this process. Let me repeat this process. Now I, I still want to have I still want to have flow written there. So I have three stages. I have closed. Closed goes to open, and open goes to inactivated, and inactivated goes to closed. So let's review what happens. First of all, my closed channel, my closed sodium channel senses positive charges. So it opens up and a lot of sodium rushes in. A lot of sodium rushes in. And still at this point it's still open. A lot of sodium is still rushing in. Very good. And after a while, let's just say that this is, this is after a while, we went from open to inactivated. And at this point this sodium channel is just sitting and it's inactivated. And we know that an inactivated channel doesn't let any ions through and also we can't open it up. We can't open an inactivated channel because it can't go back. It first of all needs to be closed and it takes a while to close the channel. So and you need to think about inactivated. Inactivated is not a closed channel but it doesn't conduct and, and, and I know that it doesn't seem very intuitive. Just think of it as this channel is not working anymore. It's not working anymore. And first of all, we need to wait a while before we can close it and reopen it. So now what happened is that at this point, this channel is going to be inactivated, which means that it can't be stimulated by the positive charges next to it. It can't. And by the time that it went to its closed state, and at its, at its closed state, it can actually be stimulated if I put some more positive charges around it. These positive charges already moved on. And now these positive charges can't really affect this sodium channels, this sodium channel, and maybe this sodium channel right next to the positive charges, maybe this sodium channel is also in its inactive state. So right now, I can't stimulate and open it again. So no matter what I do, when the sodium channel is in its inactive state, I can't open it. It's not going to be possible. I'm going to have to wait a while before it fully closes, and then I'm going to be able to open it. And hopefully this this kind of gave you an idea as to why this signal goes in one direction. Why this signal goes in one direction. And now I'm going to start the very essentials of action potential. And I'm not going to make it very complicated. I'm just going to go through the very basics. And an action potential is basically a short event in which the membrane potential drastically changes like, like what we've seen here. This is, this is in, in essence, this is action potential because there's some movement of the charge. And this is my membrane potential at any given moment, but suddenly it changes drastically. And it changes drastically and it's moving across the membrane. So it as an event that in, in this event, the membrane potential changes drastically. And it changes in a very specific manner. What do I mean? Let's just say I have my neuron cell. It's at, it's, it's at let's say, negative 60. This is its resting, uh, its resting membrane potential. And let's just say at this point, I got some sort of stimulation, some sort of stimulation. And we said that when we have this stimulation and we have some positive charges going on, we have some positive charges going on, we're going to have the opening of sodium channels. I'm going to put it right here. At this point, we have the opening, opening of sodium channels. And just a reminder, when we have this membrane and this is the sodium channel, whenever I have some sort of stimulation, some sort of positive stimulation, this is enough to cause a chain reaction. And this is going to open up and flow in. And the next one is going to open up and they're going to flow in. So this is kind of a chain reaction. And 
And the thing that starts that chain reaction is the initial stimulation here. So this is the initial stimulation. And now when the channels are open, when the sodium channels are open, we know that sodium is going to rush in and make the membrane potential more positive. It's going to make the membrane potential more positive. So we're going to see some sort of a peak here. We're going to see some sort of a peak here. But we already know that after, after a while, I wrote 10 milliseconds, but it's really, it's really arbitrary. But after a while, the sodium channels are inactivated. And when they're inactivated, no more sodium can come in and it can't make the membrane more positive. It's not going to be possible. So this is when sodium channels, sodium, sodium channels inactivate. In, in, ac, ah, this went to hell, inactivate, inactivate. And being that sodium channels inactivate, I can't have uh, my membrane turn more positive because Sodium is not coming in anymore. But an interesting thing happens. I know that at this point, after a while, my slow kid, potassium, is going to have the delayed opening, delayed opening to, the, to uh, the sodium gates, you can say. And slowly this opening, which actually occurs around here, but it takes time for it to reach its maximum. When potassium channels open, potassium escapes outside of the cell. So if this is my cell, potassium is going to escape. And I'm going to lose positive charge. And if I lose positive charge, I'm going to go down on my membrane to potential. I'm going to get more negative. So at this point, I'm going to get more negative. Way, way more negative. Apparently, it's going to be way more negative. And then at this point, these channels also slowly close. And all my channels go to my, um, to my closed formation. And at this point, at this point, the prior inactivated uh, sodium channels go to their closed, closed state because enough, enough time has passed for everything to calm down and now the potassium channels may be also closed and everything goes back to normal. Everything goes back to normal. So let's see what these things are called and before I, I name them, I'm going to go back through the procedure again. I had some sort of stimulation, some sort of, of positive, some sort of positive charges inside my membrane and all the sodium channels or the sodium channels that were nearby that specific charge suddenly opened and as soon as this suddenly opened they caused a chain reaction for this signal to open all the sodium channels and a lot of sodium rushed in and my membrane potential started to be more and more positive more and more positive a lot of positive charges are rushing in and then after a while we said that this channel inactivates and no more sodium can come in and make it more positive. But at this point, the opening of potassium channel is at its peak. It's at its peak and potassium is escaping, potassium is escaping the cell and making it more negative because we're losing positive charge and it's going to go back to being negative. And we need it to go back to being negative because we mentioned that we need this negative resting membrane potential. So this is basically fixing, fixing the situation, saving the day and it's only going to go negative. It's going to go slightly below, below my line of resting membrane potential, but then it's going to go back, then it's going to go back to normal. And the, um, the way to describe this is, this is the stimulation. This is the stimulation. Stimulation. I'm not going to really write it here because I have something more important to write. I'm just going to write it here. This is stimulation. Stimulation. And at this point, this is called, when, I, when all the positive charges are going in, this is called depolarization. Depolarization. Why? Because my membrane is polarized. The inside of my membrane is slightly more negative than the outside. It's polarized. But when positive charges come in, it's going to depolarize it. It's going to, you can say, destroy the polarization that I have here. So they're going to depolarize it. And once it gets to an activated state, when I'm saving the day and I'm, and, and I'm reconciling my uh, membrane potential to being negative again, this is called re... This is really difficult to write it like so, so I'm going to just point. This is called repolarization because I'm gaining, I'm gaining my negative charge again. And you can see that it goes down even under, even under my initial resting membrane potential. And this under is called hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization. 
and it has a purpose that we'll discuss later. But you can see that it goes below, it even overshoots, and then it goes back to, its, to the resting membrane potential, to the resting membrane potential. And this is basically the very essentials. This is basically the very essentials. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video, let you, let you get a breather, and then we're going to keep on going, uh, we're going to keep on moving, keep on trucking from this point in the next video.